seeing your reactions on all social platforms at KUTV Kenya at Richard underscore or Kenya, the ACDE, that is uh, the African Council for Distance Education, is here with me and I'm having a conversation with the executive director and she's here, that is Dr. Teresa Moma, to inform us of what higher education's higher education institutions have been doing and how committed they are in expanding access to quality education and training through open and distance learning, including e-learning. If you have any questions on e-learning, if you're an educator, if you're a student, this is a conversation that you want to listen into. Let's first of all welcome her to the show. I also get to know what an executive director does at the African Council for Distance Education. Welcome to the show. Thank you, uh, Richard, for giving me this opportunity to uh, come and share with you what we do at the African Council for Distance Education. As you have rightfully said, my name is Dr. Teresa Moma, um, the Executive Director, African Council for Distance Education. But more importantly, I'm a senior lecturer at Kenyatta University in the Department of Early Childhood uh, Education and Special Needs and I'm um, seconded to the African Council for Distance Education. Your question of what does an executive director do, yeah. especially at the African Council for Distance Education, uh, my work involves uh, coordinating uh, programs that are offered by the African Council for Distance Education, and some of these programs are hosted in our member institutions uh, because African Council for Distance Education is a membership organization which is continental and our focus is on education and therefore my work involves coordinating these programs that are hosted in different countries uh, to ensure that they are running and we are supporting our member institutions to be able to perform and also to deliver their programs right yeah. since its inception in uh, 2000 and for this international education and profit uh, that is ACD was hosted in Egerton University and now it is in Kenya University where training has already kick-started for this year and we'll be getting to that in just a short while what was the why was that shift uh, to Kenyatta University and how do you feel now that you're also a lecturer I'm guessing it's really great news that this is within your university premises yeah just to let you know that when African Council for Distance Education was founded back in 2002 and then inaugurated in 2004, Egerton University um, hosted the secretariat since 2004 up to 2020 when the secretariat hosting was shifted to Kenyatta University. Um, in terms of the training that you are talking about, um, this is only a three days training that we are conducting. But it is the hosting of Kenyatta of, of, of the secretariat, ACD secretariat, that was shifted to Kenyatta University. And even when it was at Egerton University, we had um, a former executive director, Professor Gidan, from National Open University, Nigeria, heading it. And he was here in Kenya. Wow. So I'm excited that Kenyatta University is hosting the secretariat. We have gotten a lot of support from our Vice Chancellor, Professor Co Paul K. Wainaina, who has been very supportive, and by the way, who is our Secretary General. The ACD is um, governed by a Board of Management, um, chaired by our President, Professor Goski Alabi, and who is a consulting president for Ghana, um, Lawe Open University, Ghana. Right. Right. Yes. That's great. That's a, uh, that's a wealth of support that you're receiving from high institutions yeah. of learning, vice chancellors, and of course, uh, partner institutions. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic did affect a lot of business uh, across sectors from um, manufacturing to transportation all the way to education. How did it specifically affect the delivery of education and how has open and distance learning been able to address those uh, challenges and also take measures and this of course through the African Council for Distance Education. Thank you so much. Um, I want to um, start by saying that initially African Council for Distance Education was established to support universities that were offering open and distance learning and some universities were having that 
as a whole university, but others as a section or a directorate. So we were to support the, those universities to deliver quality. But when COVID-19 uh, came in, it, gave, it helped us to, have, to learn more lessons that sometimes we can be locked down, institutions can be locked down, learning can come to a standstill, and many more institutions were struggling to find ways of ensuring that learning takes place. And um, that is how now African Council for Distance Education or la open, op distance learning um, became more visible in terms of that learning can happen remotely or virtually uh, if learning has to continue. So um, in 2021, um, after COVID, or it was around during COVID, um, African Council for Distance Education in collaboration with the Open University UK conducted a study to try and understand decisions that were made by higher institutions of learning to ensure that learning takes place, the challenges they experienced. And this was a study that was conducted in four African universities, Kenyatta University, Lawe Open University, Ghana, National Open University, Nigeria, and the University of South Africa. So we were trying to understand what decisions were made, what challenges were experienced. We realized that the universities were struggling to ensure, especially those that were offering their academic programs through the face-to-face, um, -face, uh, they really struggled because they didn't have avenues of trying to over this. We also realized that universities didn't have policies around uh, offering uh, open and distance learning. And through the lessons we learned from there, we shared with our colleagues because we also uh, learned um, from the study, tried to find out what are open uh, universities that have been offering open and distance learning mm -hmm. using to be able to deliver. So lessons learned from the good practices that were be happening with the universities that were offering program that, that time, mm -hmm. we were able to document, share with our member institutions uh, so that they can be able to see how best they can go around it. Right. Yes. I'm loving that uh, aspect of collaboration between member institutions and it's something commendable that I think anyone else who's not uh, already within the movement should be joining and especially in the areas of research. Has there been um, other uh, places that you can point out or specific initiatives, um, including maybe student exchange that has happened? Okay, even before I go to student exchange that has happened or other collaboration, mm -hmm. also during COVID, uh, that was 2020, um, African Council uh, for Distance Education in collaboration again with Open University Education, they came up with the training modules where Educators in secondary schools, in primary and in universities went through modules that were enabling them to learn how to navigate or to deliver content through open and distance learning. And we had um, around 500 participants throughout the continent who participated in those modules, and that really helped to give, uh, to equip participants uh, uh, who were either lecturers teaching at the universities, in higher institutions of learning, and even in secondary schools to be able to acquire the best tools of trying to engage their, um, their students. Concerning student exchange, um, previously uh, we have had our, student, our um, students from member institutions uh, going to other universities. I remember like even before I joined the, the the council. Uh, I remember there were um, uh, a student exchange to a university in China where students had an opportunity to go and learn from them, but also between universities. Um, the SED is um, the member institutions. We have 58 universities registered oh, with, 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 with us. Of course, not all of them are very active, but this gives a base where we have students moving from one institution to take courses in another institution. A few weeks ago, our president, Professor Goski Alabi, and myself, we had a meeting with the Vice Chancellor UNICED, who, um, he, who has asked us to um, help them 
um, collaborate with other universities where professors from other universities can teach in, uh, or mentor young researchers in his university. So that is the kind of collaboration that we are, we are, we are talking about, mm -hmm. and that is the kind of support that we give as a secretariat. That's great, that's great. That's yeah. really um, commendable collaboration happening there. Now, I also um, am aware that the Quality Assurance and Accreditation Agency is hosted, is hosted by the National Open University yes. of Nigeria. How does it contribute to the overall mission? Very good. Um, we have four focus areas. Mm -hmm. Number one is to ensure or to support our member institutions to maintain quality in their programs. Number two is to enhance collaboration, as we have said. Number three is to create forums for, um, for, for, for knowledge generation and dissemination and also enhance advocacy. So in terms of quality assurance, uh, through the Quality Assurance and Accreditation Agency, which is hosted by National Open University uh, of Nigeria, we came up with a toolkit, a toolkit that has standards that assess various areas of um, delivery mm -hmm. through open maybe programs, your vision in terms of offering open and distance learning, the programs you are offering, how you develop content, how you deliver content, how do you prepare the members of academic staff to be able to deliver that content. So that is what the, 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 the program has really supported. And like what we are doing now at Kenyatta University Conference Center, we have come up with um, a three days training workshop mm -hmm. to train TOTs who will be training their member institutions, uh, their member institutions on quality assurance so that we, they can use the ACD quality assurance toolkit mm -hmm. first to have internal assessment to see are they meeting the standards. Then secondly, we will have peer review where we will have external reviewers from within the SED membership to go and assess and see whether um, they, they, they are meeting the standards or there are areas they need to be supported to meet the standards. And that will lead to certification, mm -hmm. to be certified that you are meeting the uh, set standards to ensure that open and quality, um, open and distance learning is happening as per the standards. Right. I also want to talk about maybe the Technical Committee on Collaboration, sure. which is hosted by Open University uh, of Tanzania. And this is the um, committee that is very critical when it comes to that kind of uh, collaboration to happen between the universities. Mm -hmm. And then we have UNISA hosting the advocacy knowledge uh, dissemination and, um, um, and, and ad ad advocacy. And through our international conferences that we hold, these are forums we create to ensure that people are having an opportunity to share, but also do advocate mm -hmm. because it brings together various players, researchers, policy makers, um, academic institutions to be able to discuss uh, and share from each other. Right. Now, outside of ACD, yes. I, I don't think I will say really outside because this is uh, what you guys are looking at, the importance of e-learning. Yeah. Um, right now in Africa, how can you speak on uh, how important this is and how can we promote it, um, adoption and ac expansion across uh, institutions which are yet to uh, come on board? Um, E-learning is very critical and now it's not an option mm -hmm. that now I can go to this or not. It is critical, it is necessary, and, and, and institutions of higher learning, including even uh, lower learning levels, mm -hmm. they have moved there. The challenge is how do we ensure there is quality in the delivery of that? So um, as the NET, as the ACD, we are keen to support all institutions and i'm encouraging all institutions to register as acd members because if you go to our website at acd um at acd.org you will be able to um you will be able to find our website and and, and learn more on what 
at scdafrica.org. Uh, you will be able to find out uh, what we are doing and even how to become a member uh, so that you can be supported. Like the, the, the trainers we are training now um, are coming from seven countries and they are going to train people in their institutions primarily, but we will use them again to support in the different regions of, uh, of Africa. Mm -hmm. So as a council, we are very keen to support all institutions, both our members and not our members, and we encourage those who are not our members to join us mm -hmm. uh, so that we can be able to give that kind of support mm -hmm. using the ACD Quality Assurance Toolkit. Mm -hmm. And we have started this process yesterday. We have had presentations from three regulators, mm -hmm. that is from the Commission for Universities, um, the National Universities Commission, mm -hmm. Nigeria. We had the Deputy Executive uh, Secretary who was discussing with us, and they are very keen to partner with us to ensure that the ACD toolkit is going to be used in the over 222 um, higher institutions of learning in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We also had the commissioner um, for um, higher institutions of learning from Mauritius. Uh, she also did indicate that they are keen to use the ACD uh, quality assurance toolkit to be used uh, in their institutions to ensure there is standards. Mm -hmm. The same from Ghana. We had a commissioner from Ghana who was also who made the presentation and we are, uh, they are keen to, 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 to support their institutions using our toolkit. We are reaching out to all regulators of higher institutions of education to ensure that we partner with them and so that their member institutions are able to use the toolkit to support in terms of ensuring there is quality in delivery. Mm -hmm. More importantly, I've, I've been invited by the committee that is working on the Open University um, Kenya mm -hmm. um, to go and make a presentation. And I believe in the next one week or so, I should be able to make that presentation. Mm -hmm. And I want to reach out to our Commission for University Education because um, so that we are able to partner with them um, to be able to ensure there is quality mm -hmm. in delivery of uh, education through open distance and e-learning. Will we be able to read that presentation or follow it up somewhere? Is this something that I can get to have a look at or do I need to show up? The presentations for... That you're going to make at the Open University. Oh, okay. if you want to get it once, <laughs> when, when I'm ready to go, I yeah. will share okay. and, 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 and you, you, you get the, 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 the content. Yeah. Definitely. Thank, yes. you. Thank um, you. That is one of those successes I think we can um, definitely point out that uh, you've been able to achieve as SED and also as an individual at large. Are there other measures of success that you can um, pinpoint or maybe milestones that you guys have achieved or uh, you know results that you've been able to realize from the various initiatives something that we should uh, celebrate as a show of progress thank you so much quite a number of progress that acd has made mm -hmm. uh, number one um acd is currently uh through our president who is coordinating open and distance learning cesa um for the AU. Um, so we are happy that our own president is coordinating that and it is now hosted at Kenyatta, um, at the African Council for Distance Education mm -hmm. for that. Uh, previously, um, uh, Afri um, AU um, identified ACD as, as, as the one to, 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 to support open and distance learning, and I think that is also very important uh, to take note. So those are some of the achievements that we have made um, as, as a council. Plus there are very many um, member institutions that you've already onboarded. I think yes. that's uh, um, really remarkable and something that we can all admire. Now, the as we've seen with the pandemic, there's always evolution in, in terms of learning and institutions in uh, Africa. Are there new initiatives that we can expect from the organizations um, in the near future that we can look forward to? Um, we expect to, 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 to be more um, proactive in terms of advocating for countries that have not been able to come up with policies on, on, on uh, delivery of open and distance learning in their countries. Uh, we are also very keen to ensure that we create forums where um, good practices or even challenges that are being experienced and how they are being tackled to, to, to be able to, to, to have members and other 
people to, to, to learn from. For example, next year, mm -hmm. we are having our seventh African Council for Distance Education International Conference. Uh, it's going to happen here in Kenya at Masinde Murilo University of Science and Technology. And we are excited that it will give an opportunity for sharing and learning from each other. We also hold general conferences, um, general conferences for our member institutions where in-house they are able also to share and learn. So um, we are looking forward to that conference and I'm encouraging uh, everybody to be part of that conference and, 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 and share mm -hmm. their experiences, whether it is challenges, whether it is opportunities, whether it is successes that they have made through, especially during the COVID, because we don't know what will happen tomorrow and how we are going to navigate, but we can use lessons learned to be able to do better uh, when we meet um, with another similar um, Scenario. Right. The SEDE toolkit is one of those things that are making uh, rounds at the three-day workshop that uh, is currently happening. Is that, um, is this the second day or? Um, yeah, today is the second day. Today is the second day. Yeah. Um, what can people expect, the, the ones maybe you are watching and they're showing up for the second day today or maybe we'll show up tomorrow, what can you tell them they look forward to? Um, the, the people should look forward to um, uh, better because this training is giving us an opportunity also to share and see how best what is it that we need to change or to include so that we are able to address issues as they come up so we expect to come up tomorrow with a communique um, that highlights some of the 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 the, the, the the, the strategies we are going to put in place to ensure that we are reaching far and wide in many institutions, but more importantly, a, refined, a more refined uh, toolkit uh, that is going to be used. We will start with the institutions that have already nominated uh, members who are participating. We have 30 participants who have registered with us, and they will be using that, and we will use their feedback to refine it even better, and then we will be circulating and sending it to other institutions who would be interested to use it. Right. If I'm a student like myself of uh, Kenyatta University and, you know, I've listened to this interview and conversation, I have heard of the various successes, the various resources that are available, the support provided by SEDE. Am I, uh, is there an avenue for just a student to uh, reap benefit from what the organization is doing? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We have a fellowship program okay. uh, with support from the Africa Early Childhood Development Network. And um, we did interviews, was it early? Yeah, it was late last year. <laughs> and one of our students from Kenyatta University, um, Esther, uh, got the fellowship and she's with us and the fellowship is for nine months. Mm -hmm. So. Um, those are some of the avenues that maybe um, can be explored when an opportunity comes. We advertise, apply, come for the interview prepared, and then uh, if you get it, well and good. If it doesn't, there is a next time right. because we have one at a time. Yeah. So those are some of the opportunities. Okay, don't yeah. apply next year because it will be my turn. So, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but it's it's open and fair, so yeah. everyone should try their luck as well. Um, we are all also trying to learn and you know get uh, that support and resource from SED. Lastly, uh, Dr. Teresa, what advice would you give educators and learners who are interested in pursuing education through open and distance learning, and how can they best leverage the resources that I keep mentioning and the support that is being provided by SEDE. I want to say that time is gone when we used to look down upon people who have gotten their degrees through open and distance learning. I know this is something that was even from the highest level in a maybe um, level in the education cadres where they said, how do you say you've gotten your degree through open and distance learning? Degree you must be in a four-world <laughs> room for four years or three years for you to get a degree. But COVID did uh, justice uh, by enabling us see and utilize the existing opportunities. I want to encourage many more people to take their, to pursue their studies. Education should continue throughout your life. Whether you are working, whether you are a student, whether you are um, at home, education should continue. And open distance learning and e-learning is one avenue that gives everybody 
an opportunity. Remember, traditionally, you had to take leave. Sometimes you must lose your job. But now you can organize yourself, uh, take your degree, your master's, your undergraduate, your PhD through open and distance learning. Number two, it is not restricted to the university that is next to you. You can take it in any other university, whether in, the, in Europe, whether in Africa, in any African country, whether in Kenya, and you comfortably get your degree at your comfort zone uh, by ensuring you do what you are supposed to do as a student, even when you are working. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Teresa, for putting that conversation into perspective. Remember, the training is happening. Is it open or uh, were there registrations? It was for only those who were registered. The vice chancellors okay. nominated <laughs> at least two members from their institutions. They mm -hmm. paid for their training. But yesterday, because it was opening, our vice chancellor made it uh, possible. We were able to have people who participated virtually. Right. But today and tomorrow, it's for only those who have registered. All right. But we are going to have many more trainings, mm -hmm. and they will be virtual so that we have many more participating. So look out and watch this space. Right, definitely. Yeah. And also watch out for that communique at the end of this training session yeah. from SED to see what strategies they are putting in ensuring that uh, we are achieving or we are expanding access to quality education and tra training through open and distance learning. They will be escalating this training to more institutions in the region currently with uh, tens of uh, higher institutions of learning from several countries and of course this is all across Africa and the support that they are receiving and the resources that they are uh, giving you will be very uh, very fruitful for you if you are someone who is pursuing education. And as she said, of course, education is a lifelong journey, so there's no need to stop now. There are so many resources, there are many institutions of learning that allow you to pursue that from the comfort of your home or from the comfort of your work. Dr. Teresa Moma, thank you very much for creating time for us. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I appreciate it. All right. Thank We're you. taking that short break here again on Via Shara Tuesday. More conversations are coming to you. The newspaper review section, remember, hasn't happened yet. That conversation on the Chess Championship 2023 is also happening. Remember to send us your questions at KUTV Kenya at Richard underscore O Kenya. The SMS slash numbers, WhatsApp numbers here. And then I'll be back for more. Don't go too far. <laughs>